Hey everyone, Kenny Beasley here along with Jonathan Rogers. Hi guys, how are we doing today? We are here at Bourbon and Beyond in Louisville, Kentucky, and we're talking to an artist who got to open up the show this morning, her first time at the festival, Matilda Marigold. Matilda, thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks so much for having me, y'all. It's a pleasure to be here. Awesome. So what was your experience like first time coming here to Bourbon and Beyond? Wow, and it was just one of the most like emotional experiences for me walking. Oh my god. Like walking in Okay, wait, I'm sorry, I'm gonna back up even more. We got off the plane and we're driving down the highway behind the two giant stages there, and we're in the car and we're hearing the roar of everybody, like, just like, Rah! and we were all like jet lagged, like, out of our minds, like, had no idea what was even happening. We were like, wait, is that it? Oh my god, that's it. And we saw the huge Bourbon and Beyond sign and we were like, oh my god, and everyone was just like, Oh my god, look! And you're hearing the rah, and we were like, holy shit, we're playing there tomorrow. Like, what is going on? Like, what? <laughs> and so, that was the first thing that happened. And I'd like, then I was just like, okay, I can't think about this anymore. And then we came back later that night to see Brandi Carlisle and Kings of Leon. And I walked in, and I, can't, I, I only got her last song, but it was <laughs> Somewhere Over the Rainbow. And I walked in, and I just like was looking up at her, and I walked in with like like my band and like who are like my best friends, and I just like started crying. I was like, and I'm not a crier either. I mean, I don't know if y'all can tell. Like, I don't I don't give off those vibes. But I just walked in and I was like, oh my god, my face is gonna be on that screen tomorrow. So I'm like I'm like standing in the crowd in like the back of. This, the show. I'm not even like close to her, but I'm just, it wasn't even like, it was how small she was, how big the stage was, and how many people were just like holding her music. And like, I just was like, oh my God. Like, so was this your first time being here at the festival? Yeah, this was like my first time walking in the gates. And I just was like, so overwhelmed with emotion. I, I didn't even know how to process what was happening because I wasn't just like a, I wasn't just going to a festival, you know? Like, I've never even been to a music festival before either. I begged my parents to let me go to GovBall when I was in middle school and they would not let me go. And so, I, you know, this is the first time that I've like been at a music festival and it's not because I'm going as like a participant, I'm playing it, you know? And I'm like, what? <laughs> like, it's very mind blowing. What did you think of the rainbow lights during that song too? I was just blown away. Uh, they weren't lights, they were all fuzzy because I had tears in my eyes. <laughs> um, it was just like a wishy-washy, like, you know when you're looking at headlights through a window and it's raining? It was like that. <laughs> so Matilda, when you took the stage this morning and it finally like kicked in, what did that feel like? Not to sound like an <laughs> but it just felt really natural. Like, I just like got up there and I was like, oh, cool. Like. This isn't so big. Like this is this is cool. Like I like this, you know. You there. Yeah. Like I, if I looked up and saw how tall it was, maybe I would have had a different uh, reaction. But I was like, nope, don't look up. Just don't, don't look up. Just don't do it. Um, but I would say that like because I, I had like like my whole family was here. All my best friends were here. They all made the trip here, and they're missing school because of it. Um, and like. I just like all like my family was just there and they were all in the VIP section and I just was like singing down to them and I just was like hey guys like I was still line checking when they opened the gates and they all like booked it across the field and they were all screaming they were like oh my god and I was like hi it was so fun and like I don't know I just felt like I was like playing a little intimate show for my family even though it was not <laughs> you know um, but yeah I mean I got up on stage I was shaking, not gonna lie, but like the adrenaline was so high, I was just like, I was ripping and roaring. I was ready to go. I was like, yeah. <laughs> awesome. So, when uh, for those that might not be familiar with your music, can you kind of give us like a an idea of your influences and what people can expect if they were to come see you? Yeah, um, I would say I'm I'm about to throw some real polarizing names out here. Um, I would say my music is a mixture between Phoebe Bridgers. Tame Impala, The Beatles, and um, McGee, 
and Dijon. I would say that's like the overall encompassing and like maybe a little Brandy Carlisle cowgirl vibe in there. I mean, I love country music so much. Um, I have a cowboy boot tattoo. Love it. That's pretty. Yeah, my slogan is the New York City cowgirl. So, you know, um, so definitely a little country in there. But overall, I would say that that's definitely like where I draw my inspiration from. But I also draw my inspiration from like my friends. You know, I, I I'm so inspired by how talented and unique and creative they all are in their own rights and you know none of us make music that sounds anything like each other's which is really funny um and so like I would say that I gain most of my inspiration from just like seeing the things that they do and being like dang I love y'all um and also from my dad my dad is my best friend and he's a musician and he's a professional drummer and producer and he owns a music school and a small label and like I would say I just I'm so inspired by him and just like the things that he does and the way that he views the world um, and so showing up to my show I guess I could say that you would get a mixture of all the love that I feel for them and from them uh, coming through my music awesome. you write most of your own songs or all of your own songs I write and produce all of my own music and some and I co-mix all of it yeah I was listening to your EP and the song stuck on you like really resonated with me i thought that was an excellent song can you tell me a little bit about like your inspiration behind that and how that kind of came to be yeah um i went through (laughs) i as every high school experience tends to have i went through a very silly situationship um and i i can at least speak for myself and say that like i have a tendency to push people away when it comes to being vulnerable and I'm getting a lot better at that but at the time in my immaturity I was like no I don't want to be with you and then six months later I was like what am I doing with my life no Um, hence the name stuck on you but yeah I mean it's it was just kind of like it was a very innocent song to me that at least in the production choices that I made I was really invested in like how you know the lyrics were super innocent and like all of that kind of stuff but the song is like you know like rocking you know um and I think that I mean I played drums on that track that was really important to me I'm a drummer that was my first instrument um and like getting that out of my system I would say was some of like the most emotional vulnerable things that I've done just like whacking the drums in the studio just like "Ah!" and I remember I like did the did the drums at a studio that my dad's friend owned. And he comes in and he goes, Sounds good. And I was like, thanks. And he goes, Are you sweating? Are you like, are you hot in here? And I was like, no, I'm not too bad. Like, like no worries. And he's like, why the f are you sweating? <laughs> and I was like, oh, oh, okay. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, I got it. Got it. Next take I was done. <laughs> That's awesome. So all the instruments you play, which how many instruments can you play? Um, I can play seven or eight, I would say. I don't know. I kind of lose track. <laughs> and, and you're self-taught, right? Yes, I am. Awesome. What was that experience like? And what kind of like led you to start, like, okay, I want to learn how to play these? Um, I started playing drums when I was around five years old or four years old or something just because my dad's a drummer. And I was like, I want to be like my dad. Um, but it was never anything that I was pressured into. I always wanted to do it. I also have like a very unique style of learning. Um, and that's come back to bite me in the booty a couple times. But it's also really valuable because I'm just able to teach myself everything. Um, and going to music school now is like a very large perspective shift because now people are telling me what to do. And I'm like, hey, <laughs> what now? <laughs> uh, learning the actual technique, the yeah. like... Which has definitely been a journey for me. I mean, I I love it. I I wouldn't have it any other way. But there are moments where I'm like, oh, you're running on my last nerve, Berkeley. (laughs) No, but I love Berkeley. And I'm so grateful to be able to attend an institution with such incredible alumni and such incredible professors. And, um, you know, it's just a big adjustment is all I would say. Um, And that's just something I'm going to have to get used to, you know. That makes total sense to me. The drums were my first interest instrument too. My dad's a drummer as well, so that's where that came in. Um, so, what what does the future look like for Matilda Miracle? Man, the future. I mean, I'm releasing music soon. I've been working on an album. Um, I'm going to be releasing some singles, and then I'm going to be releasing an album in the near future. 
um, and hopefully, you know, just playing more shows, making connections, meeting cool people like y'all, um, and, you know, just staying grateful and staying happy and healthy, you know? Awesome. Last question I have for you. If someone wanted to go find the song that encapsulates you as an artist, like if they want to get an idea of you, your music in general, what one song should they go find? That's currently out. Or just the, that you've released that they could like go find on streaming or however. What is the one song that you would recommend they go find? I would say Saltwater. Yeah, that's my favorite song. On that Tell us about that song. Man, that song was a beast to produce and mix and really do anything on um, it was really emotional for me to write I wrote it during COVID I was staying my mom is from northern rural Maine um, and I was forced to quarantine in northern rural Maine and not see anybody for like four months um, even though I'm from New York City and I was raised like six months out of the year until I was 10 on a, my family's large-scale potato farm in northern Maine and so I was up there, I was feeling real sad about that guy and stuck, in, stuck on you. And I was like, dang, like I have so many feelings, not just about my whack relationship. I have feelings about other things that are happening in my life. And so I'm gonna write a song about it. And then I wrote two songs and then I was like, you know what? These songs would sound really good if I smushed them together. <laughs> and so that's what I did. And I ended up with a five and a half minute song. Um, and I recorded almost all of that stuff, um, the, the parts that I play, because I worked with um, you know, producers and stuff as well. Um, but the stuff that I play, the ending of the song is the most special audio recording that I think I, I have, or that's in the world, at least that's not true. I have other special ones that y'all will hear soon. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Um, but yeah, it's, I have an old upright piano in my house in Maine that's like very out of tune <laughs> and like, clunky and it's like an old player piano so you know when you put the scrolls in it and it just plays the piano like some little magic mouse is inside of there um and so it was like perfectly out of tune for the song it was like i don't know honestly like it, it was something from god like i i have no i have no like understanding of it but it was perfectly out of tune and like the ending of the song it's just me playing the line and I wrote it like in the middle of the like I woke up and my dad and I set up the mics in the in the piano and we like tracked it and my mom has a video of me I think I was I was a junior in high school and um, I'm playing this piano part and I remember as I was doing it I just was like oh my god like this is the most beautiful thing I've ever played <laughs> like and I'm not trying to sound like a cocky ass but I just was like, if anybody played this, I would be like, oh, my God. But I was just so in awe that, like, that came from my brain. I was like, whoa, you just woke up. <laughs> you in your pajamas right now, girl. I love it. <laughs> so, yeah, I would say salt water is, you know, something that's really special to me. And, yeah, that's, that's my number one go-to when I tell people to listen to my album.